to, as a person with a background in primary education, it was my function, I believe, to prepare these youngsters for a successful future. And that meant ensuring that they were independent, self-resourcing, lifelong learners. And that led me to think about what learning looks like for me. And I was thinking about the ways that I learn now as an adult. And uh, technology is an absolutely intimate part of my learning experience and has become more so with technology being more collaborative. And I believe that it's the responsibility of teachers to ensure that young people have that experience of technology as a medium for their learning. And I think if we're going to be effective teachers, we have to be conversant in these technologies ourselves. And I was thinking back to my own experience as a learner when I was nine, ten years old, and I was fortunate enough to have teachers that recognised how important it was that I had that broad education. But thinking about literacy particularly, my teachers helped me to learn how to write in various forms. I learned to be uh, someone who could write a good story, a poem. I learned how to write reports and explanations. I learned how to write letters. All of these things my teachers recognised were going to be skills I might need in the future, and so they equipped me with those skills. What I didn't learn was how to put my thoughts into 140 characters and share them on Twitter. I didn't learn how to write an email, and I didn't learn how to safely use Facebook. So in a way, my teachers let me down. Well, they didn't really. They did everything they could with what was available in the world then. Now the world has changed, and I think that if teachers do not ensure that children are literate in that broad sense, then they'll be letting children down. So I believe that they do need to ensure that children have a, a digital literacy and an understanding of how technology can help them with their learning. But I think there are some challenges. I think young people have an experience of technology and they have an experience of learning outside of the school context. And I think that if the school does not reflect that same experience that young people have outside, then it's going to appear as an irrelevant environment, one that increasingly young people won't feel engaged in. So I think a, t a teacher in the 21st century, a teacher now, needs to be exploiting those technologies to the best and in ways that appear relevant and useful to young people. So this is what I have this worry about, technological tools being used inappropriately or perhaps not to their very best in school environments. I have this worry that these tools have got a massive potential to transform a learning experience and make it relevant, but they're being used in ways that is fundamentally limited. And those ways are... Well, I heard someone describe... Um, oh, I'll tell you a short anecdote. A head teacher asked me... She said, I've got um, a set of Nintendo DS handheld games devices. Can you tell me some good maths games that I can use to help my seven-year-old children learn maths? And I thought, rather than answer it flippantly off the cuff, I would go to a friend of mine, an expert, Derek Robertson, who, who specialises in the use of gaming technology in the classroom. I knew what Derek would say, and he said much better than I could. He said, if you think that the device is going to deliver maths learning like that through, an, uh, through a, 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 a simple game, then what you're doing is enslaving the device to an outmoded way of thinking. And I think this is the problem. I think they have the power to transform, but we're in danger of enslaving the technology to traditional old-fashioned ways rather than thinking in new ways to change pedagogy and transform the educational experience. So those are a couple of the challenges that I think we've got. Um, my, my other, my, the other thing that we were asked to think about was how should a teacher's prowess be assessed? How are we able to um, measure whether or not um, teachers are doing these things and, and, and bringing, bringing about real change. I haven't got an answer. I thought about, um, you know, in the UK we have teacher standards which are a set of defined conditions 
or hoops that teachers need to jump through? I'm not sure that's the answer. We also have a rigorous inspection regime in the UK that decides whether teaching is uh, outstanding, good, satisfactory or inadequate. I don't think that is, uh, is, the, is the way either. So I don't have an answer to that one, but those are some of my views and opinions about the, uh, the topic today.